on development of a reliable cluster piston design. Just a couple of seconds. Yeah, take your okay. and you want to load them on my laptop or if you want to use your own, it's okay. Just let me know. Maybe you can do it between while people are setting up. It's a good opportunity to run up here and put your presentation on the laptop. So the question before I start to have for everybody is who was planning to fly today with a piston cluster B rocket? Anybody? No pistons today. I think we were all lined up to do that. <laughs> on, the, on the cluster? No, we're kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I was, and uh, I'll tell you how I, uh, what I had planned to do. So, uh, let's go ahead. Next. Yep. So, uh, I started this project thinking that uh, there would be very few people flying a cluster rocket. I wanted to take advantage of uh, a piston launched cluster to see if I could, my like person, win. Today, which I guess will be tomorrow, uh, my, my goal was to be able to report that one during my presentation, but it uh, didn't work out so well. Um, number one objective was to come up with a reliable way to um, make sure that all five motors launched were lit during the uh, ignition, as well as making it effective for competition use. I used this test model here that went through all of the flights, so one consistent model. It did get a little beat up, but uh, it did, uh, did survive, so the, uh, the first two um, designs or ideas that I had were uh, to use 18 millimeter individual standard piston launchers. Uh, you've got a piston up here on the top with a standard piston tube and a motor going in here. The challenge with this, much like any of the clusters, is you've got Niger wires coming out all over the place. We've got uh, a spider of wires here that need to be connected to the launcher and uh, could very easily follow the piston itself. The secondary idea I had was using a two inch diameter um, dowel, uh, balsa wood piece, putting a slight concave area in here that would then have a small layer of black powder in it, which would then come off and point Niger. Each of those were each of those designs had 36 inch pistons or tubes, and uh, the uh, the first one was a failure in my mind. I uh, I launched it and it veered off to one side primarily because of two things. <coughs> one, either the friction between the tube and the motor was different between each one of the motors, or the motor each output a little bit different force. It veered off and. Uh, almost unstable. It was stable, but uh, got poured out the tube, and uh, so I said, well, I'm going to scratch that one. And not to mention the fact that attaching all of the different uh, wires to the uh, igniters was, was quite the challenge to make sure that it stayed away from the, the piston tube itself. Um, in the same mindset, my second attempt was also uh, a bit of a failure. Uh, I had ignited the, uh, the black powder, thinking that it would be much like a staged motor, then igniting the, uh, the other ones. Well, all it did was cause a, uh, a small fire at the top of my piston tube, uh, which was exciting, but uh, it was definitely a failure. The one thing that I did like was the design was very, very clean. All of the wires were down inside a, uh, a PVC tube. It made it very nice and easy to, uh, to put together. So. I, I use that design to develop the, the next solution, which is uh, is a uh, piston head that looks much like this. I took advantage of what I use for a floating head piston, and that is a small, what I call, igniter core, where your igniters go into two 16th inch diameter to the top of the glass tubes, and those then go on top of a uh, two wires that stick out of your standard one. In this case, rather than doing that, I attached two leads to each one of the, the 
bottoms of this igniter core, and you end up with a piston that looks much like this. You have two very clean um, bundles of wire that can then be attached to electrodes or to little alligator clips that, uh, that can be on the top of a PVC tube, so it's fairly simple. Drop those in. Drop those in, and voila, you have a piston, floating head piston to some degree. And when I say some degree, you still have um, the alligator clips attached to that, but it, uh, it, uh, it works much like a floating head piston. Those alligator clips don't have much strength on it, so the piston launched, it, it, it didn't be successful. is actually the same thing that I just showed but a little bit different than the, the piston is shown here in the middle, or the piston head is down here in the middle, and there's the configuration of the engine. So the, each one of those igniters go directly into the bottom of the engine. And here's a, a picture of the, the center one's a picture of the, uh, the piston head with the igniters in it. And you can see just before, as we're prepping the, the rocket, just before we slide the tube up on the tube. So then became some more flight testing. First one, go ahead. The uh, first test that I did was basically just doing like you normally would, take the rocket, slide it on there, and then launch it. The issue, there wasn't enough friction between the tube and the motors. So all that I got was just a nice straight boost on the, on the rocket. No piston movement or anything. So I said, all right, well, we're gonna fix that. I took um, three pieces of one by two, Blue tape, set the rocket up, basically taped each of the three sides with that, that amount of tape and launched it again. Well, I got just the opposite. That was too much tape. It actually pulled the, tube, the uh, piston tube up and uh, ended up with an uh, unstable flight. So that was, that was flights four and five. The one thing that I did want to point is the objective was to come up with a reliable way to ignite all five motors, and with this piston, under those two tests, they both ignited. So secondary goal of, hey, let's make this work in a piston is where I really focus now. I came up with a, a friction adapter that was on the end of, of the tube. Uh, the primary purpose for that was to try to create a little bit more friction between the rocket and uh, the tube itself. I found that this was very Secure. cumbersome to try to attach a tower and stuff like that, um, not to mention the fact from a flight standpoint, I didn't get any better result. Basically, it separated right at the base, of, right on ignition, got no benefit of the tube itself. So I started working with the tape. I reduced the tape in half, um, and the next flight was very successful. Nice straight boost, the tube came out of the tower, it was a, it was a very good flight. Um, I, I then said, looking at some of the R&Ds from the last um, narrow, that there were some guys that did some longer tube work. So would I get any benefit by going from a 36 inch length tube to a 65 inch length tube? And uh, the good news is it lit, all five engines lit, but I didn't get any advantage. And primarily because the piston had stopped at the joint. Although I had sanded the joint, made it smooth, Still, just a little bit of friction, so that when the piston tube hit that, it stopped. Go ahead. Go ahead for the next one. So here's a chart showing the, uh, the results that I had. Um, flight number one or launch number one was my baseline. No piston. Um, using that rocket got 889 or 890 feet. Um, the seven and eight, which were both successful, went almost 1,100 feet. Um, and Adjusted the amount of tape, adjusted the piston side, and the, uh, I expected to see about a 20% increase over a non piston, piston launched rocket. I actually got 21.6. So I know there's not a lot of data there as far as numbers of flights and things like that, but every time I went to the hobby store, the, uh, the guy who runs the hobby store was calling me Mr. B66. Um, so that's now my new nickname. <laughs> um, so, go ahead. Conclusions? 
the, uh, the five engine cluster uh, piston head that I developed here with the igniter cores works very well. Five out of five motors lit five different times. So success number one. And success number two is still kind of in the uh, validation, which is really going to be today. And that is, can I gain an additional 20%? competition use piston launchers. Um, basically they are uh, a piston head, which in this case is an old motor mounted on a, on a raised diameter wood shaft. And during uh, ignition or launch, you basically, for preparation, you, you slide that tube up underneath the motor and attach the two niter electrodes to your launcher. The ejection charge and stuff goes into here, drives this down, and you get more thrust. Out of, the, out of the 
the benefit of gaining all of that exhaust. So basically you're, you're pressurizing a chamber behind the rocket. Yeah. Correct. Basically, you're using the initial ignition and thrust of the motor that would normally be wasted until it comes up to enough power to lift the weight of the model. Isaac Newton would be proud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Yep.